Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So you guys are not gonna believe this. Elon Musk himself sent me something. You know all those videos I did about the Cybertruck, about him building a retreat on Mars because of the existential threats to the human race here on Earth? Power wall, solar roof, Starlink. Well, he sent me something personally. And I got an email and an invite. So let's talk about it. I totally got you guys, didn't I? I know I got you guys. You guys seriously thought that the world's richest man, well, up until two weeks ago when the stock plummeted 20%, the world's second richest man. You seriously think he personally sent me a message and sent me stuff? Are you crazy? You think I'm that big of a deal? Not yet. So I know all you haters were having a panic attack. I know you were just, a what are, we, what are we gonna do? He's, he finally made it, what are we gonna do? I can't hate him anymore. No, you would find a reason to hate me, regardless. And it's okay, it's okay, bring the hate. Let me be, absorb the, the dark energy for you. It, it feeds me, it makes me grow. You know, I'm like a plant, you know? I suck in all that nasty carbon dioxide or dioxide or whatever the hell it is, and I grow, I blossom because of it. So feel free to hate on me. Elon Musk didn't send me anything, but I did send his company 700 bucks to pick up this Starlink just so I could review it on the channel. Not because I need internet, not because I live in a remote region. Yeah, I do live in a small town of sorts, but that doesn't negate the fiber optic cables running to my house. It's super easy to set this thing up. It's almost ridiculous. So we are connected as you can see there. I'm not sure if you can see on there. And we're just gonna run the speed test. Just push this button. Let's see what sort of speeds we're pulling in here. Look at that, 140 megabytes per second from space. You realize how fast that is. That means you could literally download a movie in like five seconds. But do I want something like this when I'm way the hell off grid in the back country so I can still have an uplink to you people? abso frickin lootly I do. The problem is, doesn't have that capability yet. Actually, let me correct myself. It has the capability, it just hasn't been unlocked yet. See, Tesla has this brilliant marketing scheme where they do these over-the-air updates. They do this with their vehicles. The vehicle is capable of doing way more than you initially get right out of the box, but in order to unlock these features, you gotta, you know, pay a little bit more. Good marketing scheme, the technology is amazing, so I ain't gonna complain. I wanted to review this for you people to let you know whether or not this is gonna be a good investment. And I can tell you right from the get-go, this is absolutely revolutionary, groundbreaking in almost every possible way. The ability to have the internet any place in the world, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, if that's where it's dialed to. The only limitation, I'm gonna get into that, there's a big limitation, but this thing can do upload speeds of upwards of 150 megabytes per second. Per second, that's super fast. Now consider where we were before this. What did we have before this? We had those SOS beacons. You know, we had satellite phones, which cost an arm and a leg to make a one minute phone call. We went from that to having full-blown data, 150 megabytes per second. Do you realize the quantum leap in technology that has just occurred here? And it's baffling that there's not more media attention being paid to something like this. I mean, this is absolutely revolutionary. Is it gonna allow the government to triangulate your coordinates in a dystopian post-apocalyptic future? Absolutely. But in that situation, unless you're a wild man in the woods, um, I don't think you're gonna stand a hell of a chance to survive. You're gonna have to fight back. This is still in the beta testing mode. And that means that it's going to be what they call geolocked to a certain location. There's these cells. I believe they're within a 100 to 200 mile radius. They're basically geolocked right now to a, a certain region of the planet. Whatever address you use on your account initially, that's the only address it's gonna work at. Now, some people say that they've had success in getting a connection 20 miles from that address. So that's what I'm gonna be testing out in this video. But I will say that the future is quite promising for this technology. What you can imagine in the future is that you are going to be able to 
take this with you camping deep into the back country and hopefully by that point in time they make a scaled down smaller version because this is going to be rather cumbersome unless you're in a vehicle now if you're in an rv or something like that then yeah this definitely is going to work but right now in its beta testing mode it's not going to work well for you you're probably going to have to give it a year or so until they basically open it up uh, for that uh, functionality as you know spacex has been sending up starlink satellites i think they got about a thousand up there i can't remember what the end goal is to have several thousand of these satellites and that's going to drastically increase the speed of the internet connection that you have and it's also going to allow you to use it in a mobile fashion they're already talking about putting these on buses and you know airplanes whatever the case might be to uh, get internet communication in places where you're going to be out of cell range it doesn't look like much it looks like a paper mache satellite but in all seriousness, this is a very durable unit. Uh, I've been, you know, hauling this thing around all over the place. It's got a three axis motor, so it can tilt, it can turn, it can pan, and it's just really tough. It's got a, a heated surface. So if snow hits it, you know, it'll melt. It's totally waterproof. And I haven't been being nice to the thing at all. Now they don't provide you with a whole lot of mounting options outside the box. You have to, of course, buy those. It's a whole Apple networked externalities business model where they get you in with one thing and you got to buy 50 other things. And I also don't like that the fact that this cord is hardwired to the satellite. So you can't remove this cord and it's like 150 feet long or something crazy like that. So anywhere you move this thing, you got to haul the cord around. That's a very, very fast connection. Now it does draw some power. So you are going to need a power source. Right now I have it running off of my Zendure portable power bank but it only takes i think maximum peak about 150 watts so even if you have you know like 150 watt uh, inverter that's going to be more than enough to satisfy the needs of this thing a lot of that is going to be used in keeping the dish warm so that it can melt snow so if it detects i'm not sure if it has some kind of detection technology but the dish will get warm so that the snow melts and of course the size is going to be a bit of a factor if you are wanting to use this on the road. Now, let's get something clear right from the get-go. Tesla, aka Starlink, hasn't allowed us to roam with this thing yet. And right now, it's what they call geolocked to a certain location. Basically, the address that you form your subscription to, you basically sign up for a subscription, they give you a certain range within your address. Some people speculate it's 20 miles, it's 100 miles. I seen a map on the internet which shows what they call these geo cells, okay? And apparently you can use the dish anywhere within the geo cell that you're allocated. And from what I've seen, these geo cells are pretty sizable. I'm talking like a couple hundred miles in diameter, possibly even bigger than that. So I'm thinking, depending where you fall in the geo cell, now I was able to get uh, intermittent connections out to 50 kilometers. 20 kilometers, no problem. 35 kilometers, no problem. 50 kilometers, I was able to just kind of barely, I think I was kind of pushing the limit at that point. So it knows, okay, it knows where you are, of course. But once they unlock that functionality, this is gonna be absolutely revolutionary. I mean, this is gonna allow anybody in the planet, anywhere, to have faster internet than most people have right now. That is absolutely mind blowing. Whether you like Big Brother or not, you gotta hand it to him. <laughs> He's keeping us jacked in so he can keep jacking us for them taxes, if you know what I mean. We all love paying them taxes, don't we? So that money printer can keep on printing. Boy, are we gonna get it at some point this year. Anyways, guys, uh, I think that this is definitely something if you live in a rural environment and you have spotty internet connection you're getting like you know 10 megabytes per second if that or even one megabyte per second i know a lot of people are getting that just barely enough to have one tv run in netflix or something like that you absolutely need this and it also is self-guiding so it will maneuver itself you just basically put it down plug it in it does literally everything is it worth the $700 and the $150 a month fee? Absolutely it is. Think about this. How much were people paying for dial-up in the 90s? Dial-up. What was that? Like 
50 kilobytes per second or something absolutely pathetic like that, people were paying just as much for dial-up and for a modem. So if people are gonna complain, uh, there's already people complaining, oh, it's too expensive. It's a f it's satellites in space, thousands of satellites beaming down high speed internet anywhere on the planet and people are already complaining about this. I mean, look, I'm not saying you need it. I'm not, a, I don't get any money for making this review. They, Elon Musk just took 700 bucks for me to make this review. And maybe I'll get a phone call if you guys bombard him on Twitter and just keep, you know, throwing Canadian prepper at him and maybe he'll catch wind of one of my videos. That'd be really, really cool. Cause I, I actually genuinely think that uh, Elon Musk is like a super prepper of sorts, a prepper who is thinking, you know, well ahead of where a lot of preppers are in their little, you know, locales and, and backwoods uh, hideouts. I think he's thinking big because he knows that there's these existential threats to the human species that we talk about on this channel all the time, only he's actively trying to do something about it. I think that this absolutely is an order of magnitude better. This is technological deflation at its finest. If you don't know what that is, basically that is where the there's an exponential growth in technology. It's like how, you know, in the 1950s, a computer which was 1 1000th one the power of your cell phone took up an entire gymnasium, if that, okay? And now all that computing power fits in your pocket and costs a mere fraction of the price, and that is absolutely incredible. Eventually, the price is gonna come down. Eventually, the size of this is gonna come down. And eventually, you will be able to roam with this. There might be a fee, you know, to get for all you off-griders, RVers, people who have no other option but to live in your vans and make YouTube videos about it. Anyways, all I'm saying is, is that eventually, this technology is gonna be good. If you're a nomad, if you're an RVer, don't get it quite yet because it's not quite ready yet. But I have a feeling, because Tesla moves fast, it, Starlink moves fast, and I have a feeling that within, I'm gonna say about 18 months, you're gonna see a new feature added because they're sending up satellites all the time. It's merely a bandwidth issue at this point, I believe. Don't quote me on that. There may be other technical limitations, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Are you going to be able to use this while driving? Well, I think that's gonna depend on how many satellites there are in the sky, how uh, much they can shrink down the dish. And I'm sure when there's more satellites that you won't need such a large dish. I took this thing, I drove all around, I drove 100 kilometers out from my location, didn't work that far. Uh, tried it at 50, tried it at 35, tried it at 20. Anyway, here's the footage, watch it. The, the speeds are quite variable right now. So we got 44 there. So, you know, depending on where the satellites are, the time of day, the weather conditions, things of that nature, that's gonna determine what your internet connection is like. Right now, I just have it on top of my truck. So I have a very clear view of the sky. I have had success in using it with only half view of the sky, like up against my house. So, you know, as long as you have a, a decent view of the sky overhead, you should be able to reach a satellite. So we're 20 kilometers from the address that this Starlink is geolocked to. And just to prove it, you can see I'm in the middle of nowhere. So happily say that we got ourselves a signal and we got 86 megabytes per second. Now let's run another speed test. Whoa. Was it me or did that thing shoot up to 250? Look at that, 140. 130 megabytes, 120 megabytes per second, folks. 20 kilometers from where it's geolocked. So we got to venture forth. All right, guys, so we are actually technically 34 kilometers out right now. I misjudged uh, the last place I was at. I thought it was a lot further than I was. I wasn't, so we're at 34 kilometers. So we are still getting a Starlink connected reading. And uh, we're just gonna run a speed test here for you. 24 megabytes per second, so not that bad. We're gonna go uh, try up the road another 16 kilometers or so, see what we can find. All right guys, so I'm out here exactly 50 kilometers from the designated address 
for this Starlink receiver. And uh, I've gotten a signal, but I lost the signal. So it's gonna be a little spotty. I think the further you drift from the designated address. But regardless, I was still clocking 20 megabytes per second when I did connect. So I have a feeling that this thing is going to connect eventually again, but right now it's disconnected. So either way, at least in the direction that I traveled, I got 50 kilometers, sort of. Depending on where you fall within the geocell, I mean, you may be smack dab in the middle of it, or you may be right on the edge of it. So I'm guessing that the direction you travel from the designated address is gonna factor in somehow. So if I'm like right on the edge of the geo cell and I travel, you know, two kilometers outside that geo cell in that direction, then obviously it's not gonna work, but I could potentially travel hundred kilometers in the opposite direction and it still works. So who knows? Right now though, not getting a signal. So as you can see there, no connection. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREP, all one word, 